What are the best bass strings for drop tuning? Bass players want to explore drop tuning and alternate tuning for all sorts of different reasons these days. So knowing exactly which strings to get is really important. In this video, I'm going to talk you through all the main concerns with drop tuning and how that affects what type of strings you should buy. How's it going guys? Hugh Richardson from OnlineBassGuitar.com here. On my channel I do bass lessons and gear reviews just like this one. So if you're new here and you want to be a better bass player, make a start by hitting subscribe and clicking notifications on so you don't miss anything. So here's how this video is going to work. I've got a load of different strings to show you, but I want, but what I want you to really pay attention to is how each of these different strings is really affecting the sound that you hear. So to make this really obvious and really apparent, I'm going to be putting all these different strings on the same bass, going through the same DI. I'm not going to change the tone settings or the EQ on the DI or anything like that. The only difference in sound you're going to hear is coming from the strings themselves. So the first thing I'm going to say about drop tuning is regardless of what type of strings you want to go for, you want to make sure that your bass is actually set up to handle drop tuned strings. Typically what this might mean would be alterations to your truss rod, to your nut, to your bridge, and if you're not comfortable doing these things yourself, it's probably best to take them to a shop. Ask for a setup and tell them that you're planning to go for alternate or drop tuning, and they can adjust your bass accordingly. So the first strings we're going to look at are going to be flat wounds. Now these will seem like a bit of a bizarre choice for drop tuning. Typically when we think about drop tuning or alternate tuning, we're either talking about heavier kinds of music, so metal, rock, perhaps the heavier parts of punk music, or we might be talking about solo bass players, so guys like Michael Manring. And both those sets of players tend to use round wound strings because they're a lot brighter, there's a lot more top end, there's a bit more bite to the sound. Flats, as you can hear, they've got that kind of dull thump and thud, but also as we tune them down, if we haven't got the bass set up for them, they tend to get very slack and they sound a bit toothless. So, so here I'm tuned a whole step down and you can hear these strings. They sound incredibly slack. This can be cool for some things. I was doing some recording recently where we were recording music that was meant to be kind of close to a Nirvana sort of vibe. So we tuned down and that slackness helped keep everything kind of really thick and sludgy. And that really helped contribute to the kind of vibe to have a sound like that. But I think for what a lot of people want from drop tune strings, maybe flat wounds aren't the best option. If you think this sounds cool, by all means each to their own, there's nothing wrong with that. These are Tomastic flat wounds, I've linked to them in the description below, but for now we're going to move on and look at some round wounds. So now I've changed these strings, I've got round wound nickel strings on this time. Now round wound are going to be perfect for things like a lot of heavier music and also some solo bass playing for alternate tuning because the first thing you'll notice with a round wound string is that you get a lot more aggression and bite. You can hear there's a lot more sort of metal clanginess to them. I'm playing with a pick there but even if I go to fingers. They've got that bite, they've got that aggression. With nickel wound strings though, typically you get a bit more sort of mid-range and a slightly more vintage sound. The reason why this is important is if you want drop tuning and you want heavier music, but you want to sound like a slightly older generation of heavier acts, so perhaps early Metallica, Megadeth, then maybe nickel strings are going to be better for you because they're going to provide that slightly more vintage sound. You can still get all the aggression from the round wound strings. And if you pick the right string gauge, you can still get something that's good for alternate tuning or drop tuning. These are Dunlop nickel wounds, but there are a lot of other great companies that also make nickel strings and also other strings available for drop tuning. Road to Sound have a whole range of strings called drop zone strings designed specifically for drop tuning. I've linked to them below. You could also look at DR strings. have got some great drop tuning options. So do Didario. Dunlop, as I mentioned, have got some really heavy gauge strings that are great for drop tuning. All of those are linked in the description below so you can head down and take a look. By the way, whilst I'm here restringing, I want to show you a little gadget I found which makes restringing a lot quicker, a lot easier. This is a Planetways bass winder which I've had for ages now and it is one of the best investments I've ever made. Check this out. So you know before when you were restringing, you have to get your strings, thread it through, wind it round and then do all this with your hands. It took ages, it was a complete faff. Now what you can do is this. Get the string you want. Thread it through like normal. Then you can use the wire cutters that are built into the handle. Then you place this bit over the tuning peg and then you just wind the string up. A few seconds and it's done. So what I've got on here now are round wound stainless steel strings. So again, like the round wound nickels, you're gonna have a lot more of that aggression, a lot more of that crispiness and bite. But the way that steel shapes the sound is it tends to give you a lot more low end and a lot more top end. So these are quite big, warm, bulky. 
And I think the reason why this is great for things like alternate tuning and also for drop tuning is, first of all, if you're an alternate tuning player and you want to play like Michael Manring, a lot of his stuff relies on a very sort of clean, crisp, clear, bright sound. Stainless steel is going to give you that in abundance and it's also going to sound quite modern. So it's great for things like chords. You can hear there, you can really hear every note with a lot of clarity. But if you're looking at heavy music and drop tuning and you want a much more modern sound, so someone like Justin Chancellor from Tool, for example, he has got a lot of low end and also a lot of really crisp, clean top end to his sound. So stainless steel is really going to suit that naturally well. You get both with fingers and also with a pick. And pretty much every major manufacturer will do great stainless steel strings. So again, these are Dunlop, but you could look at Elixir. They're great for long lasting. DR, Didario, Only Ball, GHS, Rotosound. All of them are linked in the description below. So head down there if you want more information to check out some customer reviews. But the big question is, which type of strings do you think you're going to go for? Are you going to go for nickel round wounds? Are you going to go for stainless steel? Are you really going to buck the trend as it were and go with flat wounds? Leave me a comment and let me know below. Of course, if you found the video useful, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in another lesson real soon. Take care.